Hi everyone, it's Bea Devine and I was just making a video for the Light Leaders Academy and I was finished recording it and I'm like, well, I'm still all hyped up, so I'm making this video today. So how are you? Hopefully um, this is finding you happy and well. The last time that I made a video, I was talking about my son, Adrian, and his horrendous experience having his appendix out and then having uh, a tube lacerate the inside of his throat and he, you know, aspirated through his lungs all blood and all kinds of stuff and was airlifted into a um, city hospital, etc. And uh, he was receiving a lot of healing from everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, he was very quickly moving through the getting out of that hospital. So now he is actually back home. Thank God and um hopefully he doesn't have any problems from here on out although he's he's sort of feeling the energy of um having you know having had a problem having gone without oxygen properly to its fullest capacity so let's keep on sending energy there um it has been wonderful for us anyway because we've been able to talk a lot more where he's always working and things and it was really nice to be able to talk with him so thanks to those of you who asked. Um, so I wanted to do this video real quick. And also uh, I'm gonna pull some cards from the Angel um, Tarot because I really feel the need that we should be having our angels around a lot more and, and really asking for their help and assistance uh, now more than ever. Because as I was telling my um, students at the Light Leaders Academy, you know, I was telling them that it's going to be very tempting to pull yourself back uh, into the old ways. It's almost like when you go through these levels of upgrades in your abilities and, you know, whatever it is for you, when you go up in those upgrades, uh, it's like everybody who's negative seems to know, okay, and they're going to try to pull at you or there's a drama happening or you know someone's got a problem with hospital going into hospital or you know there's someone complaining or there's a drama or there's an issue or your tire bursts or you know like there's all these little things to get you thinking that what you're doing is not working and so the month of april is extremely important because there are a few things that are happening one it's the first sign of the zodiac aries and we move into aries right uh, Aries new moon we had it the first of the month it was a brand new month so it's another first it was a new moon which is another first and uh, it's also the start of the um, Vedic new year as well galactic new year whatever you want to call it so um, it was just all these beginnings and there's other things that are happening and I'm going to quick read over so we also have three moons happening in Aries this is huge okay you really need to be focusing as positive as you can uh, and to amplify this energy of positivity so the aries new moon charges up your energy and personal ambitions on the first and then uh wait until the 4th of april which is a couple of days ago for the mars saturn conjunction when the hasty red planet gets speed checked by the cautious Saturn in future focused Aquarius this modulating mashup wants you to stop and think before you make promises as well what do you want for the long term not just for right now okay so whereas Mars would just keep us going Saturn has Saturn has kept us in check now the one that's coming up next is the April 12th barrier breaking Jupiter sinks uh sorry sinking up with oops whoa Syncing up with boundless new Neptune. So Jupiter and Neptune are conjuncting. Now this happens every 13 years, but there's also another conjunction here that last time it happened was 1856. So yes, so this sky knows no limits when the two freedom lovers get in cahoots. Jupiter is lucky and Neptune is all about spirituality and, and well, in some cases illusions and imaginations and things like just dreamy energy suiting Pisces to a T. Um, okay, so Jupiter and Neptune sort of look after Pisces as it is, right? So for the first time since March the 17th, 
1856, the supernatural syncope takes place in idealistic Pisces. So this conjunction is called Spirit Day, helps us break free from imposed psychological barriers. And, you know, we've just been doing so many weeks on psychological energy, um, psychosis, narcissism, dark energy, energy plays, how the energy can mimic psychological problems. And here we move into this breakthrough energy, right? So it opens up the floodgates gates globally for spirit to energize everyone. Doesn't matter what your beliefs are, something is going to shift inside of you. So the last time this met in Pisces was in the mid 19th century. It's not going to happen again in this particular energy. And it was a peak era for women's um, it, uh, suffrage, abolitionism, and the spiritualist movement began, okay? People started to become more in tune. Harmonizer Venus is also in Pisces from April 5th. So yesterday, there was a difference going on yesterday. Joined by passionate Mars, April 14th. And this will only amplify the Jupiter-Neptune connect conjunction and hopefully support the positive side effects we um shifted into a new energy you can feel it you i'm hoping you can if you stay positive you're going to feel these things there are people saying ah oh, no i don't feel this i feel this i don't feel well you can stay in the oh no it doesn't happen to me um story if you like and that is what you keep seeing okay so there's plenty of people that are even in the spiritual sphere or whatever you want to call it who are extremely negative that's you're not going to get this from here okay even if my life is going down i don't allow that to continue i don't allow my mind to go down with it i just keep on going and looking for the next thing that was something that was learned though because my first response is like oh yeah everything sucks and this person over here's got this and well how come they've got it and not me that's how I always felt because that came back down to self uh, blame and not accepting myself. Okay, so the comparison was there. So what you're being asked to do is let go of all of your own rubbish that you carry around and instead make it a an effort, just make an effort for even seven days to ground yourself, protect yourself and speak positively even if you can't see anything positive around you your life will change if you create this as your habit rather than all the doubts worries fears stresses concerns okay your worry does not increase your chances of getting lucky <laughs> right it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make it great for you it doesn't make it easy i don't know why people do it but we get into a habit of doing it and we get shown nonsense all the time and if you don't have coping skills you're just going to go well you know everything sucks so try not to do this because we're moving into this supportive april energy so then there'll be a full moon on the 16th in libra and again, that'll be about balance, peacemaking. Right now, there's a lot of information that's starting to just come to the surface, come to, knocking on the door a little bit, right? Coming forward, coming forward, coming forward, knocking on that door. Now, the doors are going to open because if it doesn't, there's going to be a lot more trouble for people that are keeping the door shut, okay? So the doors are going to open and uh we go into this full moon it is a little challenged by a 90 degree square from pluto which begins stealing scenes in the second half of the month um so world leaders will be affected by the april transits that's just how it happens the month closes out with a black moon in taurus 
which also happens to be a solar eclipse. So we enter into eclipse season at the end of this month, which means everything, bang, very, very quickly, the doors will slam. You have to leave them shut. Um, so spring eclipse season's on us, uh, big changes which arrive with sudden and unexpected twists, okay? First one on April 30th is in Taurus. The next is a lunar full moon eclipse on May 16 in Scorpio. Oh gosh, that's that's going to be interesting. And these are part of a series um, of the Taurus Scorpio axes between November 2021 and October 2023. This means like the 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 axis is changing, and two of the four eclipses that we'll experience this year. So we are going into some pretty powerful energy. So not only is your positive thoughts, you know, working in your favor, okay? And people are seeing that and trying to steer you off course and people are still panicking and people are still um, fearful and people are still stressed. But at the same time, a lot of people have become quite relaxed. Um, at least where we are, it seems like it's not as anxious when you go um, in public anymore. It, it was pretty um, heavy, I guess is the word, uh, here um, in Colorado. It was it was pretty heavy when you went anywhere the last couple of years. And suddenly people are just over it. They're sick and tired of what they're being told this and then they, they do that and then that changes, you know? And the spiritual people that were on the right pat track were trying to say, hang in there, it's going to change. Um, it's hard though when you see, you know, one thing after the other taking place, right? So there's been a, a change of energy vibration already across the board. You know, when I um, talk to my son, who's usually, like I said, there's always, it's not that he doesn't want to talk or anything, it's just that he's always so busy. At this being on his butt allowed him to um, be able to talk. We had like a five hour conversation. It was enormous and it was so cool because he realized uh, we actually think a lot a lot. And I was like, surprise, surprise. Imagine that I'm only your mum, but you know, um, things that children get told when they're young as well. And they figure it out when they're older, he was having realization after realization. So notice that people around you, um, situations around you are going to rapidly change. I've done a big reading on um, April. I actually did a couple of them, but I'm going to be doing them. I'll probably do them on Saturdays. Um, just depends unless I'm going somewhere. But uh, probably on Saturdays because I do work seven days a week, <laughs> right? But Saturday morning, I can get it done, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a look at some of the angel cards because I feel like the biggest uh, help in my spiritual journey has been working with the angels, like hands down. Uh, when I first started doing readings and things when I was really young, I was so into fairies and um, spirit guides, you know, for the most part, like I forgot all about angels. And because I was raised, you know, especially with my dad, quite Christian, there was this problem of talking to the angels, you know? And I said to my dad one time, well, if we didn't talk to the angels, then we would never have known about Jesus because Mary talked to Gabriel and he's like, well, that was different. But why, why is it different, you know? Um, she talked to Gabriel and we found out that she was having an immaculate thing. I mean, wasn't that a huge thing? I mean, she could have been stoned to death. In fact, she should have been back in those days for lying and, you know, all the rest of it, because that's just unheard of. And then you have Elizabeth, who was way old to be having children, way past menopause, etc., and she gets a visit from an angel and she's having John the Baptist. So, you know, you can't say that ordinary people can't talk to the angels, you know, 
and then write it in the Bible that they have and here's what happened. So started connecting. And then if you're a Catholic, you can talk to St. Uh, Michael, the Archangel, and St. Raphael. You know, you can talk to Jude, St. Jude, and all of those. Um, and you bow down to idols. So, you know, you have statues and things that you kiss the feet of, and idols are prohibited in the Bible. So, you see, there's just too many things here. But angels always come through. It doesn't matter as long as you are questioning the angels in the correct way. So when you ask for something, you ask as though it's already taken care of. That's how you work with the angels, right? It's already taken care of. You don't need to know how. You don't need to know when they're going to do it. All you got to know is that they're better off than you are, far, far, far more equipped than you are as a spiritual soul on the earth here without all of your powers intact right now they can take care of all of the details and take care of you as well and all of the people I mean you can't do it all you can try maybe you have been for years but let go of the reins and say to the angels you know I'm so grateful for you in my life I might not be able to see you but I can see the effects of you working in my life. It's like we can't see the wind, it's invisible until it hits a tree, right? It hits a tree and we see all the leaves going everywhere, you know, and we see the effects of wind. This is the same with your angels, especially, and your guides. You keep working with them, your life changes. It has no choice but to change. Okay, let's get some messages. We have the 10 of air, the end of a difficult situation, embracing the change and expecting things to get better, recovery from addiction for some of you. So remember we talked about the 10 of swords card when um, I was doing the big reading and the 10 of swords card was talking about the ancient curse has been broken ancient curse has been broken and now you are able to begin anew okay so whatever was going on on this planet has it, it's finished it actually finished a long time ago it takes a little while for us to to understand that and the ancient curse is finished done and maybe you've been in a state where you're so exhausted that you haven't noticed, but you, this is a 10, which is a one. It's a new beginning again. Okay. The worst is behind you or behind us. Right. And then we go into the world with Archangel Michael, who we just talked about. And this says a job well done, joy, contentment, and gratitude, the path towards enlightenment. Okay, your positive thoughts, your positive viewpoints, the work that you've been doing on yourself has not gone unnoticed. You are about to get something that you've been working really hard for and maybe you've forgotten about stressing about it because of the different energies that have been coming in and you just sort of let things go and that's what you needed to do. I actually sat there uh, this morning and just recreated my website just because I felt like that's what I needed to do. Um, completely changed the whole thing, right? So um, the world completion, we have protection in this completion. We have support in the completion. Like-minded souls are finding each other and moving forward. Let me go to the night of earth. And this says, time to buckle down, get things done, honor your commitments. A guardian angel comes forward with the Knights uh, of Earth. So this is loyal, um, dedicated, honorable, kind people around you, right? Someone coming forward to, I keep getting this feeling that we, um, as a collective, we get some kind of assistance. This is for the world assistance for the world, which puts an end to all of this nonsense, right? 
And there's this collective freedom sensation that happens. And because we all lift, almost like it's we're lifting at the same time, whether it's the 12th of April or whether it's just now, whatever it is, we lift into this energy and we don't let anything take us down after that, right? We're more cautious. And we have the three of uh, air, which talks about feeling sad and taking time to heal, the needing to forgive yourself or others. Also, the three is, as explained, kept coming up in the April reading, is a breaking of an abscess to allow everything to come out. So what happens? We lance a big boil, all the pus comes out, and we're able to heal. So that's what the Three of Swords is, is about breaking through the abscess, the problem, the situation, the pain, the sadness, the stress, the constriction. We've pierced it now. It's happened now. Out oozes all the junk, which you've all been getting rid of, in order to have that raw creative energy to move forward. Okay. Then we move into the um, lovers energy with Archangel Raphael. So then the healing starts, right? And it talks about intimate relationships, carefully weighing your decisions and good health as well. So this situation comes to the surface in your life, in the world, whatever, in the government, whatever, and we are able to have the angels place healing on all of it to diffuse any big, big, big problems that could come out, right? We want support as we're lifting and navigating our way through these changes that we've created for ourselves. So having this major uh, card come up as well shows this turning point of healing of choices that we need to make. That was another thing that kept coming up in our reading. If you haven't seen the reading, go see the reading. <laughs> um, Queen of Earth, thoughtful, creative, warm and sensible. Make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. Okay, so the Queen of Earth, okay, Queen of Pentacles, is that power within you to be warm, to be kind-hearted, to be generous, and have it also return to you. Almost like you finally get back what you've been giving out all of this time. It's finally reward time. It's finally, and see, people always think of rewards as cash or something and really it's just a, it's just happiness for you completion for you you know abundance of time of money of space of car or, or a new car animals whatever it is but it's you're getting a reward for the things that you've done oh my god and the empress has come up too so Lavish abundance, giving birth to your dreams, nurturing yourself and others. This card also has been coming up a lot in other readings that I've been doing. And if we think of the Empress as one notch above the High Priestess, she's no longer, she, it's the energy of no longer learning everything, but more that you're teaching things and sharing things and understanding things in a different way as well, bringing you into abundance and happiness and joy on all levels. It's like I feel that those around the globe that have been doing the work, have been focusing forward, been letting go of the drama, who haven't given in to everything and just done as they're told and you know, just who are fighting for freedom, who are shifting their thought processes, who are embracing who they used to be in a past life and understanding that 
you've done this work before we've broken free of the chains before and it was difficult but necessary it's like all of you that are doing this work on whatever level you are at you are finally going to see the results of all the work that you've done see how you've helped people how people are inspired by what you're doing you know and not that that's the reason why we do anything but if by proxy you know having ourselves pushing forward if that helps others fantastic that's what it's all about you know and i just feel that by looking at these cards you know we move into this completion uh in so many ways in this year the 10 of uh sorry the 10 of swords and then the world you know going into completion here the knight of earth the three of air like you know breaking the abscess so that we can heal and if you've been unwell or someone that you know has been unwell that was the it was like a a wake-up call for people also you know when you go through something it's kind of like a wake-up call you have a chance to sit back and reflect that you don't give yourself the chance to do and oftentimes many people um you know they they don't ever look at themselves because they're always just oh that's okay i'm just going to keep going past it and those traumas don't go anywhere until you deal with them as well so as we move in to a, another round of new energy this has been an interesting year so far okay as we move into this new um, energy vibration again i want to invite you at the end of the month on the 30th of april and then on the first you'll get two days with me on zoom just for three four hours each time and uh, learn some egyptian healing reiki a pdf that you can use and share with others you can teach it you can use it you can do it that may be something that you can have under your belt okay so that you don't feel like well it's going to cost me so much to do anything so i just won't do it so please try these things because you'll be working with me personally running the show live and then you'll always be able to go back watch the live zoom show download the pdf and information and you know catch up with people that are in the class with you it's really awesome okay it's only 99 dollars for both you don't have to pay separately that includes both things and you are getting a bargain okay it is going to be awesome you're going to learn a lot more than just uh these different types of modalities of reiki you're going to be attuned you're going to have meditations to do we're going to be doing declarations we're going to be connecting in with egyptian uh, gods and goddesses and powerful healing energy so if you need healing this is for you if you want to be a healer this is for you if you love spiritual things this is for you if you want to get more knowledge this is for you if you're an ancient soul this is for you okay you're going to be downloading information even if you think you know it all everybody learns something even me during these sessions okay so the link for that is easy to do if you're a patron you will get a discount that's only five dollars a month and you'll get a 10 percent discount so you basically get your money back straight away okay and uh, all of the links for everything will be below so i really hope to see you there and uh, i wanted to share this reading real quick I hope that this finds you happy and well. And until the next time, bye for now.